channel and welcome to the first video of 2022 on my channel. It seems very fitting to have an empties video be the first video of the new year. You know, it's that time sort of like with spring cleaning where we want to declutter things, kind of clear things out that we don't need anymore. I definitely do not need this big bag of empties. I really want to empty it and get things into the recycling. And unfortunately, things that can't be recycled do need to go into the trash. And I've been looking forward to go through this bag with you to let you know the products that worked out really well for me. I do have quite a bit of staples in this bag uh, to talk to you about, and then some new products in here that, you know, some of them did work out, some of them didn't work out. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm gonna do is just randomly reach for products in the bag. I'm not gonna do it in any particular order. I'm just going to reach in the bag, grab the products that are on the top here. The first one actually is the Flourish Lavender Mint Silky Conditioner. If you have been frequenting my channel and you've been watching my empties videos for a while, you know that I typically do have a flourish hair care product in my empties video because the lavender mint silky conditioner as well as the silky shampoo are staples of mine so i typically do have one of these in my empties video i do really love the conditioner because it does a really good job of detangling i do have thick wavy uh, curly hair not super curly but you know kind of wavy curly hair and it does take quite a bit of time sometimes to detangle my hair so what i do is i put conditioner in my hair and really the only time i ever comb my hair is is in the shower so I need to have a conditioner that does a really good job at detangling so this is a lovely conditioner for that and also it just does a really good job of um, conditioning my hair without weighing it down too much so that I can still get kind of a nice wavy curl but it does a really nice job too of helping to um, tame down the frizziness of my hair so I really love this conditioner. It is a staple. Um, I do have this other conditioner sitting here on the top of my bag. This is the Sienna Naturals Untangled. Now this was a new product for me. I had never tried this before. I believe this was being featured a little while ago on the Nordstrom website when they were featuring black owned brands. So I decided to try this out and I actually really did enjoy this quite a bit. As the name says, it is untangled and this really did do a good job of untangling my hair while I was in the shower and combing out my hair while it was wet with this conditioner in my hair. It's not quite as thick as the Flourish Lavender Mint Conditioner. So for those of you who maybe have a little bit finer hair, this might be a good choice for you if you have tried the Flourish Lavender Mint line and you have found it to be just a little bit too thick or a little bit too conditioning. This is a little bit on the lighter side, but I did actually find that this did a really nice job with my thick kind of coarse curly hair. So actually I really did like this a lot. So I do recommend giving this line a try. It is the, the brand is Sienna Naturals. So this actually was a hit for me and I would definitely purchase this again in the future. So next up, let's see, I have reached for the Everyone Hand Sanitizer Spray. This this is the ruby grapefruit not a whole lot to say about hand sanitizers you guys know pretty much what they are going to be doing for you how they act and how they interact with your skin but I just want to say that I do love the ruby grapefruit scent it is just kind of a very sweet grapefruit scent. It is obviously very citrusy, but this one just has a really lovely kind of rich, sweet scent that I really just love and really enjoy using. So this has become my favorite hand sanitizer. So obviously I highly recommend it. Next up, I am actually going to dig around for the packages that I have of the Aura Keisha fizzy bath. Let's see, there's a fizzy bath. I also have the foam bath and I have this mineral bath. So the mineral bath does not foam and I got the balsam fur, which is really beautiful. Let's see, the foam bath I got in lavender. I've had several of these. I really, really love the lavender foam bath. I think this is probably my favorite. And then let's see this fizzy bath. Let's see, it's called the clearing breezeway. I can't remember the scents in here. I think, let's see, there was eucalyptus and lavender, rosemary. Yeah, so this one was was really beautiful. So I highly recommend these Oracacia little like bathing packets. Whether or not you want one that foams or doesn't foam, they're all really beautiful. I typically get them at the checkout stand when I'm at New Seasons. That's like my local grocery, like health food store. And a lot of times they're on sale at the checkout. So I just keep my eyes open for when they do go on sale. And I just usually grab two or three of them on my way out the door at the checkout. So I, I really like them. I think they're a really lovely addition to the bath. 
Um, next up is the Honest Shampoo and Body Wash in Truly Calming. This is their, I think it's their lavender. Yeah, it's their lavender scent. This is the, let's see, I think this is the third bottle that I've had. I really enjoyed this the first time around. My dad picked these up for me at Costco and they come in packages of two. So the first two I really enjoyed. I felt like it had a really unique kind of like lavender coconut scent. The second time around, I didn't really feel like the scent was quite as unique. I didn't enjoy it quite as much. So in my next empties video, I'll let you know what I think of the next bottle that I have. But yeah, I didn't really love it as much. So obviously if I don't like this next bottle that I have waiting in the wings for me as much. I don't think I would be getting this again in the future, especially since I am so in love with the bathing culture body wash. I, If you watched my favorites from 2021 video, which I'll link up here, then you know I just fell head over heels in love with that. So I think moving forward, that might be my ride or die body wash. So I don't know if I'm going to feel compelled to be exploring too much with body washes moving forward in the future. But anyway, I I will be finishing the other bottle that I do have at some point, so I'll keep you posted on how I feel about that. All right, so apparently I've got a lot of body products to talk about because next up is the Red Flower Moroccan Mint Tea Silt Purifier. This is completely empty. I started to wash this out when I was in the shower, so there's really nothing to show you in it in terms of what the color is. But anyway, I actually really did like this a lot. This has a really beautiful scent of like kind of tea and mint, obviously, as the name suggests. It has a really unique texture of clay and it's kind of thick and it just foams up really beautifully. So I think this is a really nice treat to either give yourself or a gift for somebody. It, it is really unique and really beautiful. So I really did enjoy this quite a bit. Again, I am so in love with that bathing culture body wash. So I don't know as if this is something I would purchase for myself um, anytime soon, but I I do think the red flower products are so beautiful and I think it would make for a lovely gift. So I actually do really recommend it. Next up, I'm reaching for this box and inside of it is a bar of soap or was a bar of soap. This is the Sunny Ruckus brand. You guys probably know her handle used to be and the color green. Now she is Rebags, but Marie, Dr. Chick, who started the brand Sunny Ruckus. This is the Poly Poly bar. I'll see if I can find a picture of it. My bar of soap in the shower is down to just a teeny, teeny little nub. So so that's why I'm including it in the empties because it's pretty much all gone. This is a beautiful kind of like wintry, foresty smelling type soap. It's really beautiful. Um, my boys have really been enjoying using it too. I really do. This is the first soap that I've used from Marie. So just by going on this bar soap alone, I really do recommend it. It has a really beautiful silky um, lather that does, of course, it does a really beautiful job of cleansing. It also just feels really lovely on the skin. The only thing I will say is with this shape of the box is the shape of the actual bar soap. So at first it was very cumbersome to use, you know, difficult to kind of like swirl around in your hand. So I think what I'm going to do with the other bar of soap that I have um, from her that is the same shape, I think I'm going to cut it in half so it is a little bit easier to use. I have the same issue sometimes with the Osmia soap. Sometimes they are a little bit too bulky and I find that cutting them in half makes them a little bit easier to use right off the bat. But, you know, once, you know, after like a week or two and they kind of get a little bit smaller, they are a little bit easier to use in the hand. So not a deal breaker, but just something to note that if you you do get one of her soaps, it might be a little bit easier to slice it in half. Um, speaking of Osmia, now we're moving into a little bit of face care, and this is going to look kind of funny, and I'll tell you why in a moment here. This is the Osmia Purely Gentle Mud Cleanser. So this was the new release. I don't know exactly when it got released this year, or I don't know, maybe it's been more than a year. I'm not too sure. But anyway, this is the clay-based cleanser, foaming cleanser that was released by Osmia. The reason why it looks kind of funny is I really wanted to know what the inside of the bottle looked like, so I pulled it out. And as you can see, the product is actually housed in one of these bags here. I think it's to keep everything airtight. So that's what the bag inside looks like. And as you can see, it's just an empty, clean glass jar which actually makes it really nice for recycling. So these two components will obviously get thrown in the trash. 
and then I will just be throwing this into the recycling. So about the product, I actually didn't like it. I just didn't like the texture of it. I didn't really feel like it did a very good job of cleansing my skin. I just don't know what it was about it. Uh, first off, it's very expensive. I can't remember the exact price of it. I think it's maybe $68 for, uh, how much is this? 1.7 fluid ounces, so 50 mils. So it is quite expensive. So for a very expensive cleanser, I feel like I'm just going to want to be completely blown away. I'm going to want a really special, unique, sort of transformative, transporting type of experience from my cleanser. And I just didn't get that from this particular cleanser. I just didn't, um, I don't know, I just didn't get like that luxury feeling from it. I, I I don't know. I just, I can't really explain it. I just didn't enjoy the texture. I didn't enjoy the scent. I don't know if it's because maybe there was rose geranium in it that I didn't really enjoy the scent. Um, but yeah, I just didn't love the texture. It didn't feel creamy or luxurious. The foaming part of it never really felt, again, it didn't have that luxurious kind of silky foamy texture to it. It just kind of seems like the product doesn't know exactly what it wants to be. I, I just sort of felt confused by it, or maybe it was just me. I just felt confused by it. So this unfortunately was not a hit for me. When I purchased this with my own money. I will not be repurchasing this again in the future. So next up, I'm grabbing this Abati Suisse Nanda shampoo bar. This is not a complete empty. I have a small little nubbin of this as well in my shower, just like I have a small little nubbin of the Sunny Ruckus. Uh, soap in my shower, but I felt like I really did want to go ahead and talk to you about my thoughts and feelings about it in this particular empties video because it is practically empty. I love this shampoo bar. I spoke about it in my 2021 best of video. I feel like it does such a wonderful job of keeping my hair balanced in terms of making it feel soft and silky, giving it just enough moisturization and nourishment, but also allowing for the curl to be, you know, just like bouncy and it gives it some texture. So I did wash my hair last night. I used the Nanda shampoo bar intentionally because I really wanted you guys to see what it does to my hair. And I just, I love it. I just, I feel like it is just absolutely perfect for my hair and my texture. So if you have a similar hair type to me, I definitely do recommend giving this a try. It is quite expensive. I did purchase the, uh, the I was sent this in PR, you know, for full disclosure, but I did purchase a backup on my own, but I did get it during the Credo sale for 20% off, which is still quite expensive, but I do really feel like it's worth it. I don't use it every single time that I shampoo my hair. I think I use it probably like every other time, and I usually only wash my hair maybe once a week. So I'm not going through it super fast. It will last me for quite a while. So for me personally, I do feel like it's worth it. Um, next up is another one of these 100% pure bright eyes. This is a under eye mask, like one of those hydrogels. I have really been trying to move away from these because the packaging really is not eco-friendly at all, but I do find that these really are superior to any other product or any other method I try to de-puff my eyes. So I really reserve these for those times where my eyes are super puffy and I'm just feeling kind of desperate and I really need to de-puff my eyes. So that would be um, times when I am going to work and I just cannot deal with how puffy my eyes are, I will slap these on. Or if I am filming and I feel like my eyes are just so puffy and I need to film like quickly and I just don't have a lot of time to mess around, I will still use these. So I am trying to decrease the frequency in which I use them, but I do still use them and I just wanna be fully you know, transparent with you guys that I am still using them. I did try the David's Toothpaste, the Sensitive Whitening Premium Toothpaste. This is a new formula, I think, for them. I don't know how long it's been out. I did go through two of these. I really enjoyed it. I pretty much like all of the David's formulas except for the charcoal. I really did not like the charcoal. There might be one in here somewhere. I don't know if I've mentioned that before in the past. I really did like this. And as I said, I like all the David's formulas. So yeah, big thumbs up for all of them except for the charcoal one. 
Okay, next up is another soap. I'll just talk about this real quick. This is the Nature by Canis. Uh, this is their bar soap that I think it's just like their regular formula it has kind of a clovey type scent. I did actually include this in my best of 2021 and I included it because I feel like it does a really nice job of getting rid of the smell if you've got some stinky pits going on. I will say though that I have for the last couple weeks, I've switched deodorants. I've tried a new deodorant. It is the Kosas deodorant. I think I'm gonna talk about that more later. And you guys, that is a really phenomenal deodorant. I was not expecting it to be so good. I think it might be edging out my Dr. Hauschka deodorant, my favorite that I've been using for, I don't know, 15 years now. But yeah, I really like the Kosas, and since I've been using that, I really haven't felt the need to use this soap to get rid of stinky pits, so I don't know. Although I will say my son actually really likes to use this, so we probably will keep using this, but I did wanna just say as a side note, which actually, let me see here. I think I do have, speaking of, I do have an empty of the Dr. Hauschka uh, rose deodorant, so, it is apropos to be mentioning the Kosas deodorant in this conversation because I just don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna be using the Dr. Hauschka Rose deodorant as much anymore because like I said, you know, the Kosas has really been kind of a game changer. I really do like it. I have the unscented. So I just wanted to put that out there because for any of you who have been thinking about it, I do highly recommend it. And I do actually have another deodorant to mention here. This is obviously an empty. This is the Walita Wild Rose deodorant. As a little background, I have been using the Dr. Hauschka one for, like I said, about 15 years, maybe even longer. And so what I would do is pretty much use the Dr. Hauschka every day. And then what I would do is I would rotate in another deodorant just to kind of try, see what's out there, see if anything worked better. And this was really the closest second for me in terms of the, you know, being second to the Dr. Hauschka. And I really do like this. I really love the scent. And it was kind of on par with the Dr. Hauschka, but I just really love the roller ball of the Dr. Hauschka. I love the convenience of that. And then this was empty. And so I thought, well, I should try another one. So I got the Kosas, which actually has a roller ball, works really well. So you guys, I really like the Kosas and I'll stop talking about that. We're gonna move on to the next empty. This is the Free and True Midnight Milk. This is a balm cleanser. I really, really love this. This one, it is beautiful, it has a beautiful scent of jasmine sambac. I love the creamy texture, it does a beautiful job of cleansing, it feels really good on the skin, and it also makes for a really beautiful flash mask. I love to use it in the shower as a flash mask, so highly recommend this one. This has been a huge hit for me. This is an empty of the Stark Aurora. This is also a really beautiful cleansing balm. I really like this one a lot. As you can see, it has a really beautiful uh, orange color. The only thing I would say that I don't really love about it is actually the scent. And I know people are crazy for this scent. It has this kind of beautiful, like orangey, chocolatey smell that I do actually like opening it up, smelling it here for you guys. But when it comes to actually having it on my skin, I just, I really don't love, love, love it. I like it and it's okay. And I was able to, you know, get through the jar, but I would rather just reach for something else. Like I really do love having the free and true on my face. I really love the, um, the Daphna cleanser that smells like orange, but it's more of that like really citrusy orange rather than like the orange chocolatey, you know, more sweet kind of foodie smell. So there's just other cleansing balms that I prefer in terms of the scent profile. So while I think this is a beautiful product and so many people love it, it's just not one that I would get again in the future. I mean, it was actually sent to me in PR and I absolutely appreciate, you know, Stark and Jess for sending it to me. It's just not something I would get uh, personally in the future. Um, I just reached for the Lila B Aglow Face Mist. This is a very pricey product, and at first I actually did enjoy it, but as I used it more and more, I just didn't really feel like it did that much. This is one of those mists that you use um, to kind of set your makeup and give you a nice glow. Just didn't really love it. Don't think I would get it again in the future. I actually think the 
Tatcha, I forget the name of it. It's also got glow in the name. I think the Tatcha one is better. And if any of you do have a recommendation for a setting mist that kind of is a glowy setting mist that you really like, definitely let me know down below because I am on the market for one. Um, I do have a little mini of a Tatcha one, so I don't need to be getting one anytime in the near future but I would like to get some recommendations because I will be on the market for one probably in the next few months or so. I just grabbed out of the bag the Aster Rain Microbiome Face Cleanser. This I really did love a lot. This is a beautiful cleanser you can't see here now because it's empty and I did actually start to rinse it out when I was in the shower, but it has a beautiful blue kind of turquoise blue marine color. Really, really pretty. I really like this a lot. It has a really lovely texture, very similar to the uh, Earthwise Beauty Marshmallow Cleanser. So it has just like this really nice silky texture. It feels beautiful on the skin, very comforting, and does not strip your skin. So for a foaming cleanser, it just feels so nourishing and I highly recommend it. It is less expensive than the Earthwise Beauty Marshmallow Cleanser. So if you're interested in the Earthwise Beauty Marshmallow Cleanser, but that's just a little bit out of your budget, you might want to check into the Aster Rain. Um, speaking of budget buy, this is the Coco Kind Vitamin C Serum. This I really, really enjoyed. I would definitely be getting this in the future. I feel like this is a beautiful vitamin C serum, highly recommend, very well priced, very beautiful texture, and the scent, I don't know, I'm not really getting much of the scent right now, but I really remember loving the scent. I can't remember exactly what the scent was, if it was kind of like a slight uh, neroli or something, I don't know, I can't remember right now, but I feel like I really loved the scent. So anyway, this was a big hit for me, totally loved it, and I will definitely be getting that again in the future when I am in need of a vitamin C serum. I have a couple of them going right now. I have the Josh Rosebrook one, and I also have the Sahara Rose that you guys know that I absolutely love. I do like to have a couple of vitamin C serums going at once, so when I am in need, I will definitely be getting the Coco kind again. Um, this is the 12 Beauty Intelligent Frontier Facial Oil. I have been singing the praises of this pretty much throughout the whole entire year. Absolutely love this. It is very, very expensive. I got this in the Boxwalla Beauty Box. Um, I do have another bottle going right now. I think this is about $200, so very, very expensive. Once I finish the other bottle that I have, I don't know, I will see what I do. I think that I would probably get it again in the future, even though it has an incredibly high price tag because my skin just absolutely loves it. If you are interested in learning more about it and why I love it so much, then I would definitely go. I'll, I'll put up a video here. I've talked about it in so many videos, so I'll try to think of the one that might be the most informative for you if you wanna learn more about this. So yeah, I'll link that up above if you're curious about that particular um, 12 Beauty product. But yes, I absolutely love it. Um, I have an empty here of the Live Botanical Nourishing Cleansing Oil. This is also another phenomenal product that I absolutely love. I will definitely say this is my favorite emulsifying cleansing oils. So this is one of those cleansing oils that does rinse off with water, but I think I will also say this is just across the board my favorite cleansing oil in terms of the overarching um, umbrella of cleansing oils. So including both uh, emulsifying cleansing oils and then the cleansing oils that you need to remove with a cloth. I just love this one so much. It has a beautiful scent of lemon balm. There's lemon balm in here. And if you wanna learn more about this, I did mention this in my best of 2021 because I just love this one so much. So anyway, I won't talk about this too much because you guys have heard me rave about it so much, but yes, this is a beautiful product. And of course I will buy it again in the future. I already have another bottle of it going right now. Um, next up, I actually do have a mascara. This is the Inica Bold Lash. So I have two of their mascaras. I have their lengthening one. I think it's like their vegan lengthening mascara, which I absolutely love. And then this is their Bold Lash. This was their volumizing one that they came out with, which kind of interesting for a volumizing mascara their wand is actually kind of on the skinny side, which for me, I love. I really prefer the skinnier 
brushes. So I just wanted to point that out to you all. I really love the Inica mascaras. I think that in the clean, you know, green beauty realm, Inica does some of the best mascaras. This so. is an empty of the My Shell. I can never remember the name of this product. So I'm gonna have to bust out my glasses. This is the Sun Protection Sun Shield Liquid SPF 50. And I do think this is the old packaging. They have since updated it. It does still come in the dropper, but the packaging I think looks a little bit different now. And I have spoken about this product a lot on my channel. I've mentioned it in a lot of favorite videos when I've been speaking about my favorite SPFs. And what I typically do is I mix it with another SPF like the Hanua Malu, for instance, that's what I've currently been mixing it with. But lately I've also really been enjoying using it on top of a very emollient moisturizer, for instance, something like the Walita Skin Food, and then putting this uh, sun shield on top of that. I really have been enjoying that as well. So I feel like it's actually a very versatile sunscreen. I love, you know, tinted sunscreen. I love that it has the SPF of 50. So this is a big recommendation from my shell. Very accessible, easy to get, um, you know, online at Whole Foods. So that one definitely continues to be a staple and a recommendation for you guys. Uh, next up here is the Josh Rosebrook Serum Spray. I love this. I think I just discovered this this last year and included it in my best of 2021 video. This stuff is phenomenal. So like I said, I washed my hair yesterday and I incorporated this into my hair routine, which, you know, not only for this video so that you could see what my hair would be doing today, but just I've been using it um, just as part of my routine because I love it so much. So as I mentioned, I washed my hair with the Abadi Swiss Nanda shampoo bar, and then I did use the Ranavat hair oil, and then I finished with the Josh Rosebrook serum spray. And um, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned this in my best of 2021 video, I just use this, you know, I put it all over my hands and then I use it just around the front of my hair to um, keep things from getting really frizzy. And I just, I love this stuff. It's so easy to use. It just feels so good and light, but also does the job of decreasing the frizzies. And I just, I highly recommend it. It's a staple of mine and I will just always be using it moving on forward um, since I've discovered it. Next up here is the Youth to the People Adaptogen Soothe and Hydrate Activated Mist. I've talked about this several times here on my channel. I love this stuff. It's a beautiful mist, has a very, very fine mist spray, has lactic acid in here. The smell is beautiful. It just has a very, very light floral scent that dissipates quickly. I love this stuff. So this has definitely become a staple for me. All right, so next up, let's see. Oh, I've got the um, Live Botanical Barrier Balm. So this is a huge favorite of mine. If you are looking for a balm that does not have essential oils that is really focused on protecting and nourishing and strengthening your skin's barrier and you want just those beautiful plant waxes and plant extracts and ceramides and just all the good stuff for your skin, I highly recommend checking out the Live Botanical Barrier Balm. Um, as I've mentioned many times, uh, Carolyn from Live Botanical also has the mini sizes as well. So you can try the mini sizes before investing in the larger size. I'm also reaching here for another Live Botanical product. This is the First Light Brightening Oil. This actually has vitamin C in it, the tetrahexyl decal, I never know if I'm saying that right, tetrahexyl decyl uh, ascorbate. So THD, and that is one of the vitamin C esters that's oil soluble. It's very stable and it's very good for, you know, if you have sensitive skin, so it's not going to cause irritation. And another thing that makes it really nice for sensitive skin are there are no essential oils in here. Uh, it also has, of course, very beautiful plant oils in here. So such a lovely oil serum. So if you are looking for an oil serum that's really nice for sensitive skin that has the vitamin C in it, you might want to check out the First Light Brightening Oil from Live Botanical. I do have a code with Live Botanical, so if you are interested in getting that discount, go check that down below in the description box. Um, I do have a cleanser from Sahara Rose. I don't know where the top went, but it is a pump top that actually works really well. This is the Luminous Clarifying Cleanser from Sahara Rose. This is actually 
a really beautiful cleanser. I highly recommend this one. Um, it's a very milky cleanser, like a creamy milky cleanser that foams up just kind of um, ever so slightly. So I, foaming actually isn't the right word. It's kind of like a, a really light lather. It's kind of like that middle of the road if you like a cream cleanser and a very, very gentle foaming cleanser. It kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So I really do recommend checking that one out. I also do have the Good Molecules Rose Water Daily Cleanser cleansing gel. This one I don't personally love so much for myself, but my husband actually really likes this one. So this is a foaming cleanser. It is just a little bit stripping, um, not like super stripping, I wouldn't say. It's not like my skin, like when I do use this, it's not like my skin feels, you know, super parched or I feel like I'm doing something terrible for my skin, but it just, you know, I'm so used to using the Earthwise Beauty cleanser, you know, when I do reach for a foaming cleanser or like the Aster Rain. So when I use a foaming cleanser, I'm used to my skin actually feeling just really silky and well cared for. So I just don't get that feeling from this particular cleanser, but my husband husband absolutely loves this one. So I purchased another one for him. So I feel like this is kind of becoming a staple for him. So I thought I would include it in this video. Um, next up here, I've got the Necessaire body lotion. I did really like this, but I don't think I would repurchase this again in the future. I mean, it's nice and I liked it, but I didn't totally love it. It didn't completely knock my socks off. I mean, in terms of having my socks knocked off by a lotion, I really do prefer the CV Skin Labs. I think that one is just extra special. It is a little bit more expensive than the Necessaire, but I feel like it is worth the higher price tag. I'm trying to think of, you know, what I'm using right now, I think is the Alafia lotion, which in and of itself is not super moisturizing, but what I've actually really been enjoying lately is using a pump of the Alafia and then mixing it with a dropper full of a body oil and then creating my own emulsion, which I've absolutely been really loving that so much. This I probably wouldn't get again in the future and I don't necessarily know if I recommend it for you all. So next up is the Josh Rosebrook Nutrient Day Cream. This is the tinted with the SPF 30, as you can see too, sort of like with the uh, Osmia, I wanted to see what was going on inside the bottle here. Same thing, has that little like baggy inside the bottle, which is actually nice. You know, it is an improvement on his other packaging in that, here, I'll pull this out in that you know you're getting a lot of the product, pretty much all of the product out, except for the end of this pouch here. I could probably get one or two uses out of that, which, you know, maybe I will. Maybe after I'm done with this video, I'll cut this and then just squeeze out the remnants of this and I'll be able to get out, you know, maybe two or three more uses, which I'm totally fine doing. But definitely an improvement on the previous packaging where it was really difficult to get out the product that was at the bottom of the bottle. So at least this way I'll be able to I don't know, we'll see, but it seems like I'll be able to squeeze out the rest of this and get the last um, remaining uses out of that. So anyway, you guys know I love the Josh Rosebrook Nutrient Day Cream. I think it is a beautiful product and I absolutely love it. So I do highly recommend it. Um, this is the, what is this? Oh, the Forest Rhapsody Dew Drops. This is kind of like a gel cleanser. This was given to me by Maggie of Tender Forms. I really didn't end up liking this. I kind of liked it at the beginning. Let me see if you guys can see this. I think I left a little bit at the bottom. So you can kind of see that it's got this like gel texture. And so what you do is you rub the gel cleanser on your skin and then it just kind of emulsifies in kind of like a milky texture. I just didn't really love it. I don't know what it was about it. I feel like if I'm going to do kind of like that gel balmy type of cleanser that I want it to feel a little bit more balmy and less like a gel. I want to be able to do more of a massage on my face to just really feel like I'm, you know, cleansing my pores and just having that moment to do massage. But this stuff just kind of like the gel just, it just almost just like disintegrated and you just weren't able to do the massage. There was no kind of like oil left behind to do the massage. It just kind of like, I don't know, just sort of fell apart. And so it was a little bit of a novelty, you know, the first couple times I used it and then the novelty sort of wore off. And then it's kind of interesting, 
The smell got a little bit funky, like it definitely has a cannabis scent, which is okay, but I couldn't really tell if the if the product was starting to go off or what. I just, I wasn't really sure and that kind of confused me. So all in all, the dewdrops from Forest Rhapsody was a little bit of a miss for me. So I'm very happy and grateful that I got the opportunity from Maggie to try it, but it's not a product I would purchase uh, for myself in the future. Just saw here at the bottom of the bag, I do have an Inica long lash. So actually let me show you um, what this brush looks like. And then I will grab the volumizing one on the top here, that's the bold lash. And then on the bottom is the lengthening. So that's how the brushes compare. And then just to reiterate, I love both of these mascaras. I think Inica makes great mascaras. I think the Bold Lash is a really nice uh, volumizing mascara, but I think if I had to pick just one of them, I would pick the Long Lash, but I think that's just because I tend to prefer brushes that are a little bit thinner and I do like formulas. If I had to pick a formula, I do tend to prefer the lengthening formulas over volumizing formulas. And then next up is the Sommer. This is a facial oil from Noshaba. This actually is a really, really beautiful product. It's just that the scent is really, really strong. And when I first started using this, I was in love with the scent. It really has a beautiful scent of marigold and there's jasmine, uh, but it is really strong and it is quite tenacious. So I started using it after, you know, I was using it on my face and then I just, I really couldn't put it on my face anymore. It was just too strong. I started using it on my body and then after a while I couldn't use it on my body anymore because I just, I just, I don't know, I just got tired of having the scent just on my skin. So I just can't use it anymore. So unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to go ahead and just dump the rest of this and just recycle it. But you know, it's not like I can't recommend this, but I would just say, you know, if you're able to get a sample of it, which I think I maybe did see samples on the Noshaba website. I'm not 100% sure, but it is one of those products that is very, very strongly scented. So if you know yourself and you know that you can't handle strongly scented products, then I would definitely steer you away from this particular product. But overall, it really is a beautiful product. It's just the smell was just a little too strong, which then leads me to the Laurel Vibrancy Renewal. Um, this is a facial serum. I really love this for the most part overall, but this too is really strongly scented with essential oils. And Again, I mean, I've said this several times in recent videos, it's not like I'm against essential oils in skincare, it's just I'm definitely leaning more towards either products that are very judiciously, and again, it's not like they're scented with essential oils. I know that essential oils have their time and place in skincare and they can have very you know, healing properties and medicinal properties, in particular with uh, Laurel, as well as with Earthwise Beauty. Um, you know, there are medicinal properties with essential oils but they can sometimes be a little too overwhelming for me personally. And so I am finding myself either leaning towards brands that use very, very minimal essential oils or just no essential oils at all, or do have options for essential oil-free products. So with this Laurel product, this is the Vibrancy Renewal uh, Facial Serum, I just, towards the end of the bottle, I just, again, kind of similar to the Noshaba one, I just couldn't take the scent anymore. So this is not a product I would get again in the future, and I just, I was not preferring it, unfortunately. So this is not a product I would get again in the future. And as I was mentioning, like in the Le Botanical First Light Brightening Oil, this is essential oil free, and I'm just definitely more leaning towards products such as this one that are essential oil free. Uh, another product that I do have from Le Botanical is the Water Spirit Hydra Mist. This was absolutely beautiful. If you are a lover of Hydra Mist, hydrosols, then I do definitely recommend checking these out. And what's really interesting about these is they are seasonal releases. So definitely keep an eye out on what she is doing with these Water Spirit Hydra Mist. And then last but not least, I have the Fine Daytime Radiance. This is an eye serum. 
really, really beautiful. She makes one for nighttime as well. Both of them are really lovely. I do feel like I prefer the nighttime one. If you saw my video where I talked about my six favorites from Boxwalla, this was a Boxwalla discovery, and I did like a celebration, congratulations to the Boxwalla to celebrate their six years, and I will post that up here if you wanna check that out. Um, the Fine, I serums were part of my six favorites from Boxwalla. So I do go more in depth into this product over in that video. So if you're curious about it, do go check that video out. But anyway, this is a beautiful product. I love this one. I do love the nighttime one as well. So if you're curious about it, go check out that video. But yeah, beautiful product, highly recommend. Obviously this is an empty. I got through the whole entire thing. I did finish my nighttime one as well. And then I repurchased another nighttime one. So I really do feel like this is a stable product for me moving forward. So that wraps up another empties video. I know I kind of did rapid fire through these products. So if you have a more in-depth question about one of these products that I wasn't really able to delve into, please don't hesitate to ask me down below. You guys know I always love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. That would really mean so much to me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.